I just thought I'd take a little bit of time right now to answer some questions, but also to just share with you what I believe the Lord is doing uh, with us in this time. So if you're able to hop on, that'll be great. I just have a few short things to share with you. Hey Val, good to see you. All right, um, I just wanna get into some of the things that I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you first, uh, just as a short encouragement, uh, but also I want to give you some updates of what God's gonna be doing at Word of Grace in this next month or so. So uh, if you can stick, stick around, that would be great. I'd love to share that with you. So first thing I wanted to share is just how we handle uh, these weeks. Um, it's been quite a trying time for a lot of us, um, especially some of us have uh, had to get uh, used to uh, not being able to meet with each other, not being able to talk to each other as much. But one of the things that I'm seeing is so essential in this time is learning to lean into the Lord and learn to hear His voice. Um, there is no substitute for hearing from the Lord yourself. Um, if there's one thing this season has taught me in great depth, it's that I cannot afford to wait to hear from God through either somebody's scripture devotion or somebody else's thoughts on a subject. I need to be learning to seek the Lord myself. So I would encourage you with that. If, if there is something that you, you are troubled about, Go to the Lord with it. Don't just go to a devotional. Don't just go to scripture just, just for the sake of saying, well, this is a scripture that deals with it. Start asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you through his word. This is something that Bob was encouraging us with when he went to, took, took, took us through the Kingdom Life series. So I'd encourage you with that. Um, as we handle these weeks, one of the things that I've been hearing and seeing a lot of is a lot of... Um, frustration, a lot of frustration with where the state is at, where uh, where our county is at. We thought we'd be over this as far as opening up and why is this taking so long? Uh, I want you to know, first of all, that I understand your frustration. It is, it is a frustrating thing when you feel like everything else seems to be opening up around us except churches or certain things, certain times our job. Uh, why, why is it taking so long? Uh, I just want to give you some help from what I have received from the Lord. Um, one of the things that I know is extremely hard now, because I am one, I am a leader now, is as leaders, you're often making decisions with information that you have. Some of it is faulty, some of it is good information, but you still have to make a decision nonetheless. Okay, so one of the things that God has given us in leaders is to first of all, honor them. Okay, so it is very tempting at times like this to gripe against the leaders that we have in all places. Um, you, you might even be frustrated with me at, at this point. Uh, that is not so much the issue as much as uh, our state leaders, our government leaders, our president, all of these people uh, God has given us these people. If you read Romans 13, uh, one of the things that is abundantly clear, there is no authority that God hasn't put in place. Okay? So if there is authority in, if there is an authority structure in there, it is something that God has put in place. Does that mean they make the right decisions? Does that mean they're godly? Absolutely not. But what it does mean is God is not unaware of their leadership and their leadership style. So the important thing in all of these things is to be someone who responds to God. In 1 Timothy 2, 2, it talks about praying for our leaders and those in authority. Is this something we do with sincerity of heart or is it something that we do as an extension? Well, I guess that's the Christian thing to do. Now to really carry them, that scripture actually says, you know what, give thanks for them. Well, there are times where I don't feel like giving thanks for those who lead me. But you know what? God has given them to me. So I still need to pray for them. 
So I, I would urge you in this time, don't give in to just the frustration and let that boil over into a spirit of complaint. I would say, go back to the Lord and say, Lord, how do I pray for them effectively? How do I honor those you have placed in authority over me without being someone who's just led astray or someone who's brainwashed? Because that's not what we want. We want thinking people. We want people asking good questions. But at the same time, don't lose honor. This is something we teach our children. You might disagree with me on a whole bunch of things, but remember I'm your father. Remember I'm your mother. So there is a certain honor that has to stay intact through the places of I don't know, I'm wrestling with this. I'm not sure about this. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, okay? The whole chapter, I'd urge you to read it. It talks about bearing with one another and how we minister to one another. So in this time, you will find believers who you disagree with. You will find people that you just like, what are they talking about? Why are they saying this? And it could be frustrating to you. Again, don't let that frustration boil over into a mean spirit. So take them before the Lord and say, Lord, this is something I heard from their mouth. How do I effectively love them and bear with them? Bear them up like as if they're completely fine with you, as though there is nothing between you both. Bear them up like that, like as if they're your own, okay? So I just encourage you to do that. So those are just some pointers I wanted to put in place for the spirit with which we're going to navigate this next month, okay? So there's going to be some things where you feel like, well, this should have happened a long time ago. We shouldn't have done this in the first place. Don't get into that. Don't get into a place where you feel like this is something that I need to now make my voice heard. I really appreciate those of you who have contacted me. Uh, those of you who have filled out the survey, let me know what you're feeling, how you're doing. I appreciate that because that helps me take back to the elders as we make decisions for this next season to take into account the whole family. Okay, so this is the third encouragement, but also this is what leads me to the updates that I'm going to give you. All of the decisions we are making, all of the plans we're making is based on the whole family. Okay, so I want you to keep this in mind. If you in your home are planning to do something. If say, let's for instance, you are planning to go camping. Would you camp? And if say you had a 10 year old, a four year old and an infant who's three months old, would you plan something where you're gonna be going in the outdoors, okay? And living in the elements without any amenities. You won't have any facilities, nothing. Are you gonna go and do a camping trip like that in that situation? Or would you rather work with what would my wife need? Do we, how do we feed the baby? How do we make sure that my toddler doesn't run off into crazy things? You're making sure that all aspects of your family are met and that's what you end up doing as the grown up, as the adult. So in the same way in a family, in a church family, we're not all at the same place. We're not all able to do the things that everyone seems to be absolutely certain. This is how you do it. This is how you do outdoor camping. Well, even though that might be true, this is how you do outdoor camping. You go sleep in a tent, you just put, throw out a, a sleeping bag, and that's it. Is that, but is that what you would do if, if you had an infant? You'd be a little bit more cautious. You'd be a little bit more thoughtful about what you bring. You might even make some adjustments to what you do. So that's what we, we are doing in this time making adjustments for how we all interact with each other, okay? So there are certain things that, uh, as far as groups go, I want you to know that the first thing we're going to do, uh, starting from May 16th onwards, God willing, by that time, our leaders are at a place, and I'm talking about our state leaders, are at a place to allow us to do things a little bit more freely. So we want to do it in a measured approach, because there are some of us who are just not even keen on the idea of meeting. While there are others of us who are, who's, who are excited to be meeting with somebody like right away. Okay, so we got to find a good medium between the two where we can find places for people to start meeting in a healthy manner with good social distancing. I would really encourage you. This next season will become a whole lot easier if we practice 
good principles of just general health and hygiene, okay? If we start to do that, it makes gathering times a lot easier so we're not sitting there saying, hey, did you do this? Hey, did you do that? Can you do this, please? Can you not touch that? We're not having to do any of that. We want it to be a nice, life-giving environment where we say it's, it's safe for people to start coming back. So we want to start practicing some of these things now. So the first thing we're going to do is small groups. We're going to start working our way up. But before we start small groups, we wanted to test certain things out. So I'm just being very transparent with you. We talked about this as leaders. We're going to start doing just having the teams that serve in different areas to start coming and doing different things as groups, but practicing the same principles. So we want to do it almost like a test tube to see how does this, how do we react to being in the same space? How do we do these things well? Are we doing things with uh, good safety, good hygiene, things like that. So we're going to start getting our worship team and a few others slowly layering back, okay? So that we're going to do for a couple of weeks. Uh, God willing, on the 31st of May, we're going to have what we would call our whole team here doing a live church service, okay? Now that will not have that will not be open to the public in that sense. We it'll still be fully streamed online, but that is preparing us for hopefully on the seventh of June to start having at least a small group of people meeting at different times, possibly at the same time as a Sunday service. And if there are things that change with how our health professionals want us to react to what's going on on the ground, we will pay attention accordingly. But what I want you to know is we don't want to drag this thing out longer than it should, but we also want to do it thinking of the whole family. Okay, so I would just urge you, as you're thinking about, well, well what do I think about this? Think about the whole family as you think about yourself and your interaction with the Lord and uh, how you want church to be. Okay, so those are a couple of things there. Um, the last thing... I want to mention is the month of June, we're going to be launching small groups, okay? Now, this hopefully will be something where we have smaller groups of people who can be accountable to each other. So again, we don't want to go all crazy with where have you been, how many people have you met, how many people have you touched, that kind of thing. So at least if it's a smaller group from within the church where we can say, can you practice these things well? but start fellowshipping together in person. So that way we can create a small group of trust and people in different areas of our church start meeting together for Bible studies or things like that. So we're gonna talk through that a little bit more as we get detail, but for now, I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind that small groups is something that we're gonna start doing, okay? So whether, we, whether you're part of uh, a contingent that feels like I don't want to do any church meetings in big public spaces. I get that. That's fine. If you're, if that, if doing a small group is an option for you, consider that. But this is something I want to make absolutely clear. All of the things that we do, we will also have an online option available. Okay. I want to repeat that. Everything that we do, whether it is a Bible study a prayer meeting, or if it is a live church service. All of it will be available online as well. So if you're someone who I ask or we talk a little bit and I say, would you be willing to lead a small group? It also means we're talking about having a laptop set up for those who are going to who are going to uh, sign up or participate remotely. So I'd encourage you to consider that. So whether you're someone who's able to go straight into the in-person meeting or not, I want you to start cultivating good relationships with those in the church fellowship, okay? So if, if you're not, if you're someone who's newer to the church, I would encourage you to start meeting with people either online or in person. But again, we're gonna do this all in accordance with the guidance we have. Okay, so please don't run, rush off ahead and start saying we're going to start meeting every week or every day. Start doing things in a measured approach. And I believe that will be sensible for all of us. Okay, so keep the whole family in mind. So speaking of that, I have one study that I will be starting 
on June the 3rd. It's a parenting study. Uh, so if you're interested in a parenting study, it's going to be a book called Raising Giant Killers. And if there is one thing that I've seen in this season is uh, us having our children around us a lot has also meant seeing some of the things in their attitudes, in their responses to things. And we need to be intentional about how we parent our children in this season. So whether you have grown up children or not, um, if you're somebody who is a grandparent or if you're somebody who is a parent of younger children, I would encourage you to sign up to do that. So details for that will be coming out. Raising Giant Killers is a wonderful book. I've read through it. It's just a very good book on trying to encourage parents to affect more than just the behaviors of our children. We are not trying to just look for good behavior. We're looking to train our children for significance in the kingdom of God. So we want to train them to have an appetite for the things of God. All right. So that's something that we're going to be working with in the month of June. So uh, those are all my details. Uh, if there is anything, any questions that I can answer for you, feel free to type it out quickly and I'd, I'd be happy to answer it. Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Hey, Kirtana. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Melody. All right. No questions? Okay. All right. Um, since I've been talking for quite a while, I, I think I should end this video. But um, just understand this. I, I, I totally am so privileged to be your pastor. And I really love you. And I'm praying for you. And I can't wait till we can be back together. All right. Uh, don't, don't be disappointed. Don't be frustrated in this season. Rather, turn to the Lord and also bear with one another. Love you all. Bye.